uh, the inner ear in particular has got different sensors that can test whether a person is moving up all of a sudden. We, we test acceleration as in an elevator. Uh, when you step on the gas in a car and you get thrust backwards in the seat, we've got sensors inside our ears that actually are, are telling us that we're being pushed forward at a certain accel with some acceleration. Okay. This chair can excite those sensors uh, individually is what we're trying to do. So we've got pairs of these sensors, two, se two sensors that do the up-down motion, two sensors that do the four app. And so uh, we'd like to be able to excite just one side but not the other. And so if we can assess the person's behavior during some tests and say, you know, you really should be behaving in this way, but you're not. Then we can tell that person, this sensor's failing you. And so we can better look and diagnose what kind of problems they might be having. What we can do in this system is we can also uh, test when you have this spin going around, sometimes there are defects or there are problems inside the inner ear uh, that are occurring. We can bring them to new positions and have a very good idea of where these particles are and in some cases not only diagnose the problem but also treat the problem. The way we determine whether someone's having a problem with our chair is to actually record our eye movements, which uh, we record with infrared high-speed goggles, so we can see the eye movements that arise in response to stimulation of the, of the uh, vestibular system. Our camera's actually monitoring the, his, his eye movements now. We've got uh, in the, in the uh, trace below we can see the horizontal and the uh, the vertical canal or vertical eye movement response. Um, so the the red red tracing is showing the vertical eye movements, the up and down eye movements, and the the uh, horizontal eye movements are shown by the the blue tracings. The eye movements would be provoked in the position where the uh, semicircular canal is is being activated by these debris. And uh, what we would be looking to see is that the nystagmus or the eye beating response would diminish over time. It fatigues out when it's in the provoking position. And when, that, when the response fatigued out, we'd move to the next position. So we went through a set of, of positions there, and we would expect in the non-provoking positions we wouldn't see any eye movement responses at all. And then we'd bring them back, and we might repeat this again to make sure that we, we had... Uh, had a successful treatment. The plan is once we we have all the engineering aspects of the chair largely worked out, then we'll probably move it over to the med school here on campus, and then we'll have we'll be able to offer both clinical and research opportunities. And because the chair will be unique uh, here and around the world, I anticipate we'll have opportunities to bring in clinicians and patients from other places too to share. So it'll be a shared resource with the with with researchers and clinicians in, in the community at large.